All right, so you guys got to check out this place that we're renting for the next couple of days. Honestly, this is one of the reasons why I don't ever want to use another hotel. If we can get more places like this. So we basically have an entire apartment slash house. It's got one of these things, which people probably haven't seen in the last 30 years. So typical stuff, kitchen and stuff like that. But I like that the furniture is really nicely laid out and it's got some really interesting decor, stuff like this here. Check out this toilet. <laughs> you think you're in the shower? but the toilet's right there. I mean, what is that? Uh, it's convenient. I guess, I guess if you wanna go shower and shit at the same time. So this is bedroom one. Is it comfortable? I mean, it's a little stiff, but it's nice. Yeah, this looks like, <laughs> sweet Jesus, look <laughs> at that key. It's definitely vintage. <laughs> it's vintage for sure. So Vernon, try to open that shower. Cause I was trying to open that shower door. I'm just gonna leave that there. You know what, that's a problem for later, Vernon. All right. <laughs> for most Americans, they just use that as storage. They just keep <laughs> And then this is bedroom two. Is this bed good? Oh, this feels much better. Where did this go? Oh my gosh. Is that where you're sleeping tonight? I'm like, well, I wonder if there's booze. And wouldn't you know, this is probably the best booking we've had so far. And the lady that's renting us this place, she's actually really, really nice and gave us a little bit of a tour through these maps that they have of the town. It's kind of funny that people still have these when you have Google Maps, but she kind of wrote out where we should check out depending on what we want to see. Some interesting little things like a dinosaur museum and stuff like that, but apparently one thing seems kind of random that this town is famous for is it has the world's largest Christmas tree. And it's apparently up on the hill over there near the church. And when they turn it on, it lights up the entire town basically because it's so bright. So this town is called Gubbio. It feels like we've been transplanted like 500 years ago, because as you can see, there's a ton of really, really old buildings. Everything has this sort of historic medieval vibe to it, right? So like when you drive into the town, it kind of looks like just a regular Italian town, but it's only when you come inside of the town and you start to walk around and you see these really, really old medieval streets like this, that's when you kind of get the sense like, okay, this place has been here for a long time. You know what's funny though? The streets here are still better than in Chicago. <laughs> that's true. So something you're probably only gonna see in Italy, we, uh, we just bought these donuts. Um, at least that's what the Google translates it to. Uh, inside of what looks like a city hall. It, it really makes no sense at all. The guy just bakes these donuts and he brings them into there and he just sells them right out of there for like a dollar fifty. So, try it. It's very dry. It is extremely dry. Very dry, very hearty. It's hearty, but it's sweet. Tastes like it has a black licorice inside of it. Doesn't it? Like anise? A little like bit. Star anise or something like that? This is definitely more on the savory side. We're gonna choke to death if we don't find <laughs> something to drink really quickly. Come on. So when you guys come here, you gotta stay at the romantic suite. It just is not really a romantic town. Mm. If your idea of romance is, uh, you know, medieval history. And a lot of hiking. Yeah. This is a small, I think this is the biggest gelato I've seen here. What flavors did you get? Strawberry. I got Sicilian pistachio. Let's see if it's good. Well, these, are, these are really good. Oh my God. I think this is the most touristy thing ever. Hey, do you think the knights also wore Oakleys or is that just me? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know any other way of saying it, but this town just smells old. It's like an antique store when you walk in. You know what I realized this town looks like? It reminds, it's kind of like Venice, but even more like medieval. I don't know, it reminds me of Venice, but without the water and it smells better here. A lot better. Yeah, but it definitely kind of has that like vibe. That kind of a vibe. Whatever that vibe is, it's 1600s vibe, I don't know. But it's just, it feels very, like you're almost like on the set of a movie. It just almost feels a bit surreal. So coming to a place like this, you have to bring shoes because there's a ton of walking and everything is up these really crazy hills, these like giant inclines. We can see people are probably completely tired by the time they get to the top. Every time we travel to these towns, I realize how out of shape we are because you just, you don't realize how much walking you have to do and just mini hiking. I can't even imagine the people three, 400 years ago probably were in 
excellent physique because this was probably nothing to, for them to go up and down in every day. And imagine what kind of shoes they were wearing at that time, yeah, which is basically a piece of leather on their foot. No Nikes or Adidas there. <laughs> I love how as we were talking about being out of shape, Vernon's like, oh look, there's truffle tasting. Vernon, what do you think about these views? It's beautiful. I think this kills it though. What does? The spikes. No, I like it. Look, it just means the birds are not gonna be able to shit over here. Can you imagine this is your house? Like three, four hundred years ago, this is your house? Yep, and you live to the ripe old age of 35. So we just made a, like an amateur mistake. Vern and I were like, oh, let's go eat something. We're checking on Google and literally every restaurant in this town opens up for dinner at 7.30 or eight o'clock. It's typical in Italy though. So, I mean, this is what you have to expect. You know, before we see that event tonight, we wanted to just make sure we weren't too hungry, but unfortunately we're just gonna have to eat afterwards. So I guess it's small little snacks for now. About close to the time when all these people are supposed to come out for the procession, and it's getting packed over here. There's pr there's pretty much nowhere to room, and there's actually a ton of kids. It seems like yeah. everybody brought their kids, their dogs, everything. This seems like a family event. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I was right up there in the front. Uh, I don't know if you could see me, there was tons of people, but uh, it was really intense. A lot of people were really trying to get photos and videos of the oh, event. Yeah. Um, we heard a lot of the singing and chanting and things like that. I mean, being from the US, we never see stuff like that. So it was kind of cool to see that. Maybe once, maybe we'll see it again. So something I noticed, this seems to be like the priests and from other regions. So people here aren't only from this city. I think there were a lot of traveling priests from, even from other countries. So it seemed like it was uh, a very emotional and very like an intense moment. And it was just really like nice to be part of that group and just, I don't know, it was a, the atmosphere here. Like the smell of the smoke that they were burning, the music, the different singing, the different people singing different songs. It was really beautiful. Hopefully we can we capture that on camera because here being here, it's something really, really unique. So after all that, let's go see if we can have dinner at 8.30. So since today is Good Friday, usually on Good Friday you don't eat meat, you only have seafood. So we went with something a little different today that they had on the menu. I'm getting like a seafood, almost like gumbo with gnocchi. And Vernon's getting like spaghetti with some type of uh, grilled fish. There was a little lost in translation, but it'll be amazing either way. This is definitely like just the perfect medieval town. This is one of the reasons why this area of Italy is often people's favorite. It's because you have a lot of these towns that just feel like you're transported back to another time. And other areas of Italy, like where we live in the north, it can feel kind of clinical and sterile. You have a lot of modern buildings and stuff like that, but there's just something about these antique buildings that people find charming and uh, almost timeless. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's like the quintessential Italy. Like, look at this. Like, this is what you think about when you think about Italy. So when we went to the Colosseum in Rome, it was packed, and I think it was like 20 euro each. We're the only people here, and this was three euro each. People often think that Rome is really the only place in Italy that has like a real concentration of ruins, and that's probably true because it was obviously the center of the whole empire. But the cool thing is, is that there's little ruins like this scattered all over Italy, and this one is 2,000 years old, so we looked at the sign over there, and I mean, we have it all to ourselves right now. There's literally nobody else here except us. So this is me as a spectator, I guess. Do you feel like that guy from Gladiator? No, I feel like the emperor who's just sitting around deciding whether people should, you know, <laughs> make it or not. Imagine walking up these stairs in those tiny little sandals that people used to wear back then. This is much worse looking down. Wow. This is probably easily the best view of the whole town from this, from atop this little theater area because you can just see all of the little historic district or the, the, the older buildings 
those medieval area, and you can see the modern stuff over there, so you can kind of see how they contrast. I don't know, it's st still just amazing to me that there's like no security, nothing. No, like, I guess a very trustworthy society. What's pretty cool though is that we saw on the sign that this is supposed to house like 6,000 people. Um, it's probably not going to be that big. They definitely kind of removed a bunch of the area over there, so. Maybe 6,000 people 2,000 years ago. Yeah, they were probably a lot thinner back then. So as we were walking down, Brendan noticed something, like the new bits and pieces they put up to kind of hold up the whole structure. So if you're waiting to come to Italy, don't, because I don't know how long this is going to last. It seems like nature is really taking over. So we were just wandering around this museum and we looked at the different areas of the map of the town that we're staying in. And we looked at this area and I was like, oh, necropoly. It sounds kind of familiar. So I double checked and it stands for graveyard. So where on the map are we staying? Right where the, the graveyard was. <laughs> so yeah, they didn't mention that on booking. That's what, <laughs> that's what you get when you want to stay in a town that's over 2000 years old. So here's something I wasn't expecting to see in this town that our host told us about. It's a dinosaur exhibit, but what we didn't know is it, the exhibit is inside of an old church. <laughs> Never thought of that in a million years. It seems ever so slightly ironic, but it's an interesting exhibit. We're gonna definitely check that out. Something you don't see in a church every day. So it fell 80,000 years ago and it was discovered randomly up on the hills here. So this is probably one of the better dinosaur museums and I did not expect to see this on this trip so it's really cool I'm very excited actually for this Vern what would you do run if you saw this I'd just run whatever whatever you if think about if you just saw this the... crawl out good god touch it that's your hand to scale <laughs> good thing we didn't exist in the same time period this thing could have swallowed me whole I mean yeah I love the architecture in Italy. So we're inside of a dinosaur museum, inside of a church, and on top of the dinosaur museum, there's somebody's laundry. There's a giant mammoth in here. So I wonder if this museum did it on purpose. So we have a mammoth behind there. We have a saber-toothed tiger, and we just saw like a replica of a squirrel. Do you know what I'm talking about? Comment down below. What did you think of the church? I thought it was amazing. Like the church was very well preserved and the fact that it doesn't have to be demolished or empty and they can house in another amazing exhibit, it's really cool. Normally whenever we travel anywhere, we like to stop by and see if we can grab something from the local place. And this is even more local than that because if you look at some of the products like this one, the guy over there at the register, that's the guy that's on these. So he makes a lot of these things himself, I guess the truffles and the wine and things like that. So that's really cool. So we just stopped by at the store and the guy pretty much gave us a appetizer style tasting of everything he had. We bought quite a few things. And something about living in Italy is you can message the stores like that on WhatsApp and they'll like overnight you whatever you want. It doesn't matter where you live in Italy or maybe even Europe. Yeah. Uh, but you can just literally message a store on WhatsApp and they'll bring you the stuff. So it makes it feel like even though that one place that you went to in that small little town, uh, you're not there anymore, you can still get the ingredients from there. So you're still eating local even though local is somewhere else. So this town pretty much has everything. This palace that's also a church has a Da Vinci exhibit, totally random. And it was like seven euro each to see the palace to exhibit. And I think there's like three or five other things to see for seven euro each. This is why Italians drink. <laughs> yeah, it makes the, um, the hundred flight of stairs a lot easier. So I'm pretty sure at the end of all of this, we're gonna find the Holy Grail. This is going to be uh, the Da Vinci Code, round two. We were joking around, like, oh, these are medieval toilets. Turns out, they are. Do you just, like, crap in the open? 
Yeah, I guess so. You and a couple of friends. This is like the fifth floor. Where does it drop? Out of the streets, probably. Out of the people down there. Ah. The layout of this place doesn't make sense. This no. is like the fifth or the sixth floor and it just opens into this grand ballroom after you climbed like a hobbit through a bunch of stairs. So we didn't find the Holy Grail, but we did find some incredible views. We found the Holy Grail views. <laughs> we got excited for a second that there was going to be an elevator, but we thought wrong. <sighs> we got to be hitting like 20,000 steps today. Oh my God, that is narrow. So let's go explore this little cave, which is a toilet. I guess that's where you put your toilet paper. This is very low to the ground. Also very short. Are those stairs? I don't think they made up their mind. Maybe they thought about it just before they started building it, but it's okay. none of them. That's what it looks like. It looks like it's none of them. This is why they wore the sandals. Now it makes sense. Now they're probably laughing yeah, but those at us. Those sandals have no grip on them. Neither do my Nikes. <laughs> Especially since it rained. Everyone always wonders, oh, Italians are always so in shape. This is why. This is why, because they have to hike everywhere. These cities, the way they're structured, it's all on a hill, downhill, up a hill. I mean, it's, the view is beautiful. It doesn't translate well on camera. What do you think, Vern? I'm tired. But anyway, it is beautiful, yes. <laughs> that is true. Just to give you an idea what it's like driving in this town, have a smart car. And even then, good luck. So that's it for our Easter weekend in Gubbio. Now it's a five hour drive back home, but it's not that bad in Italy. And I'm really surprised that this town had a lot more to offer than I initially thought. You know, I saw that particular event that we went to on Friday night, I've seen that on Instagram and other places for a few years now. So that's one of the reasons why it was on our bucket list and why we wanted to come here in the first place. I didn't know that it had all the other things like that dinosaur museum. So <laughs> that's one of the really cool things about just kind of winging it when you go on a trip. You may plan a couple of things, but then as you go and you visit the place, you're gonna see a bunch of other things to, to do. Yeah, sure. but overall, I think this town was really good. I would come back here again, maybe in the warmer months. Uh, it has a ton of great restaurants, it has a ton to see. Something I would love to do in this region is go truffle hunting, because you can go, not with a pig anymore, but with a dog, and you can go into the woods and go truffle hunting, which just seems so like fancy to me. That's been pretty much it for our video. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you subscribe and stick around. And Oh, and everything we do, anywhere we stay, everything will be linked down below in the description box. So if you want to have the same experience we did or just some suggestions, if you live here already or if you're coming for the summer, everything we do is always linked down below in all the videos. But that's been it. Ciao.